What's up guys? Welcome to the next video of the course Dynamic Programming for Beginners. If you haven't watched my previous videos, feel free to check it out. It's all available on YouTube, no ads, the content is 100% free. For those of you following the journey, let's quickly recap what we've done in the previous video. So last week we saw different variations of the climbing stairs problem. The first version of the problem asked us to find the distinct number of ways to reach the top of the staircase, given that you can either climb one or two steps at a time. In the second version, we decided to extend the constraints so that you can climb one, two or three steps at a time. And then in the third version, we generalize the constraints so that you are allowed to climb up to k steps at a time. We've also reviewed how to optimize the space complexity of the first two problems and were able to optimize the space complexity from O of n down to O of 1. And if you remember, I mentioned that we can apply the same technique to optimize the space complexity of the k steps version of the problem. But we never implemented this idea. One of the students asked if I can show this optimization to you guys. And I love these types of requests and this is why I would like to do it right away. So let's do some coding. All right, so I've got the climbing stairs problem here, uh, the case steps version of the problem. And as we've just said, we want to optimize the space complexity from O of N down to O of K. What does it mean? It means that we no longer going to allocate um, memory for n elements but instead we will allocate memory for k elements and that's exactly what i'm going to do so previously we had this dp array of size n plus one now we can just allocate uh memory for k elements right and if you remember from the previous lecture so when we were optimizing this climbing stairs the two steps version of the problem right we allocated we created two variables a and b that we used uh, to hold sort of like um, values from the previous calculations right so this is exactly the same thing that we are going to do like in this problem k equals to 2 um, and this is sort of like dp0 and this is uh, dp1 right um, so we're going to do the exact same thing here right uh, imagine that this is a and that is b, right? Uh, when k equals to 2. But in reality, we don't even need this solution to the second subproblem because, as you remember, um, dynamic programming problems have overlapping subproblem property, meaning that if you have solution to the first subproblem, you can get the solution to the second subproblem. So we can even drop this dp of 1, right? And at that point, the loop would start from 1 and um, that's pretty much it right so the idea here is that we'll have this dp array so let's say the k equals to three so we would have an array of three uh an array an array of size three and then as we store values to this array uh like one one two once the array is filled we would need to store the next value somewhere so we would simply uh, start from the beginning right and we would start rewriting previous values and um, as many of you probably know the way to do it the way to achieve it is by using the mod operator uh, so we would go one one two and then four five and so on and so forth right so that's exactly what I'm going to do we no longer need uh, to run up to K it's like more like K minus one because we access the zeroth element and then dp of i mod k dp of i minus j mod k and dp uh, the result to the answer to the overall problem is in dp of n mod k so let's run the test real quick and see if everything is working as expected great so the test passed and we're good to go Okay, so now I would like to review one more combinatorial version of the climbing stairs problem. So we know how to find the number of distinct ways to reach the top of the staircase for any given k. Now let's say you have a new requirement. It could be like a follow-up question during your interview. The requirement is that you need to skip 
certain stairs. The reason could be anything, but let's say you are not allowed to step on red stairs. So we are allowed to make one to k steps at a time as usual, but now we are not allowed to step on red stairs. Let's try to visualize this problem. I'm going to draw the staircase and represent it as a it's just a straight line instead of drawing, you know, like the actual staircase. Um, so let's say this is our staircase, right? And I want to uh, solve this problem for when n equals to 7, right? So n equals to 7. Let's say that k equals to 3, right? So we are allowed to make from one, two, three steps at a time. Now, this is the ground, first stair, second stair, third stair, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So this is the top. And now we also need to um, highlight which stairs are red. So those stairs that we are not allowed to step on, right? So let's say we'll have an array of, let's call it, uh, I don't know, like RS, which is like red stairs. And this array will represent um, indices of um, stairs that are red. So we'll say, let's say um, one, the first stair, third stair, and then let's say fourth stairs are red. So we're not allowed to step on those. And I'm also going to use the red light, the red marker to highlight them here. So first, third, and fourth, we're not allowed to step on this stairs. Okay, so now let's remember what was the transition function uh, for this prop for the regular case steps version of the problem, right? So if you remember it was f of n equals the sum for all the i's starting from 1 to k and then um, n minus i, right? So this is the formula. Great, so now let's try to uh, solve the problem for when n equals zero. So we remember that when we're at the, uh, on the ground, there's only one way to reach to the top, right? So that's exactly what we're going to say here. So we'll say one way to get to the top when n equals to zero. What about when n equals to one? So here, one is uh, a red stair, right? So we are not allowed to step on it. So there is, there is no way to get there. So it's, there, there are zero ways to reach the first stair. How many ways to reach the second stair? Well, based on our transition function, um, we know that uh, we need to add the previous three elements together, right? Because k is equal to three, k equals to three. So that's exactly what we are going to do here. So we need to sum these two guys. Um, and it's actually, you see, I'm using just, just like two elements. That's because um, we are starting at zero. If I would do uh, k equals to three and I would apply this uh, value to this function, to the transition function, we would do something like that and we would fall um, out of the boundaries of the array. So in order to prevent, uh, you know, from this to happen, we would need to either have an if statement in our code, which would ignore this cases, and this is something we implemented in, in the previous lecture, or the other option is to run the loop uh, starting from i, and then not to k, but to the minimum between k and n, right? So in this case, when we run the loop for, um, let's say, 
for two, right, will not, it, it's going to be like starting from one to two, not to three. Um, so this is like a minor trick that you can use. Okay, so the sum of the previous two elements in this case is one, right? Now, third and fourth, those are zeros, zero, zero. Now, what about the fifth one? Uh, the fifth one is the sum of the previous three again, right? Because k is three. And if we apply k to this formula, it's going to be n minus one plus n minus two plus n minus three. There's three elements, so this equals to one. And then uh, to get to the sixth stair is this three elements, which is one. And then to get to the last one, to the top of the staircase, is two, right? So let's see if this um, if this is correct. We have two ways to reach the top of the staircase. Um, so the first, this is the first route, right? This is the first route. And then the second route would be from the ground, we go to the second step. And then from the second, we go to the fifth. And then from the fifth, we go to the top. So yes, this is correct. Uh, we have two ways to reach the top of the staircase. Now, let me quickly implement this, um, this version of the problem, and then we'll move on to a more interesting problem where we'll try to um, do some like optimization type of uh, a problem instead of like counting things like we've, did, like we've done in the combinatorial version of the climbing stairs problem. All right, so I've got the climbing stairs problem, but now we are not allowed to step on red stairs. So we need a way to indicate which stair is red, right? So I added this stairs array, which is an array of booleans, and this array will help us to know if we're st if, if certain stair is red or not. So the values would look like false, true, false, let's say false, true, false. Uh, so the first one is false. It's always false because um, we're on the ground and otherwise we would not be able to move forward. The first stair is red. The second is not red. Third is not red. Fifth is red and so on. Uh, and as we've just said, uh, as we've just seen on the whiteboard, every time we reach the, the red stair, we want to mark, uh, mark it as zero. Um, so to speak, and the solution to reach the red stair is zero because there is no way to get to the red stair. So we can say, we can represent it in code uh, as just by checking if the current stair is red, then dp of i mod k is zero. Otherwise, we do everything as before and that's pretty much it we now just we now, now we skip red stairs and we don't count them let's see if the code let's see if the test from the whiteboard works and it is everything is green awesome guys so i would like to finish this video for today because it's getting too long and i typically don't like making uh too long videos because i value everyone's time so Let's try to make those videos like 10, 15 minutes maximum. Um, I hope it makes sense to you guys. Enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye.